Technological advancement is a story of doing things the hard way. To smelt iron, we first made bronze. To build steam engines, we hired blacksmiths. To program computers, we used punch cards. So let's talk about the bringer of fire, the first technology. In an antique time, two titans were charged with populating the world. Epimetheus, who acted spontaneously and only cared about the past, and Prometheus, who was thoughtful and looked to the future. Epimetheus rapidly made beasts with warm fur, sharp claws, speed, and strength, and when Prometheus returned to sculpt man, he found he had only few gifts available. Prometheus created men in the image of the gods and gave them the gift of Logos and taught them about technology and civilization. With these gifts, man could be anything. At least that is what I thought the story was. In the Theogony, there is no mention of Prometheus making man, and it is one of our earliest sources. According to the Theogony, the first men and gods came from the same starting point. First, there were men of gold, who were equal to divine and became gods. Then men of silver, who lived shockingly long childhoods, but then died rapidly due to crime. Then men of bronze, who were demigods and heroes. And then men of iron, who were our race of men. Where the men of gold came from is a little unclear, but the silver, bronze, and iron were all made by Zeus. Prometheus being a kind and loving parent is a later addition by other writers. Instead, Prometheus is originally a trickster who appears to resent the Olympians. In the original myth, Prometheus first sabotages Zeus at the settling of accounts between gods and men. Prometheus butchered an ox and laid out a lavish feast. In front of men, he placed plates covered in appetizing snow-white fat. And in front of the Olympians, he placed the unappealing stomach of the ox. Zeus objected, saying the plates were unfair. So Prometheus was like, fine, you choose. Zeus suspected a trap, but was never the brightest. And he picked the fatty plates, only to discover there was nothing underneath but bone. Mankind received the stomach, but found it stuffed with delicious cuts of meat and entrails. Zeus was mad. But the deal was made, and forever after, mankind would burn the bones and fat on altars. Pretty convenient to explain why the gods get the leftovers instead of the prime cuts. Zeus immediately retaliated against mankind and removed fire from within trees. According to Greek science, fire grew inside of wood. Prometheus outsmarted Zeus again, carrying a flame from Olympus hidden inside a fennel stalk. Zeus was even angrier when he smelled the sacrifices now that mankind had flame. I do want to take a moment to address how strange and self-defeating it is for Zeus to remove fire. He needs the offerings mortals burn. But who am I to get in the way of someone else shooting themselves in the foot? The Olympians seized Prometheus and bound him to a great pillar which was thrust into the mountains. Every day, Prometheus would wake up to an eagle consuming his liver, and each night his liver would grow back. On and on and on and on. Eventually, Prometheus would be freed by Heracles, but that's way down the line. For mankind, the Olympians devised Pandora, but she is a story for another time. There is one big question left from all of this, which is Prometheus' motivation. In the story where Prometheus made mankind, his deception seemed paternal and loving. But in the original Theogony, he seems to trick Zeus just for the sake of it. Maybe he was angry about his cousins being overthrown. Maybe he just didn't like Zeus. But that doesn't feel right. Prometheus literally translates to foresight, which means that even if he couldn't see the future, he could see the writing on the wall. He knew this would go badly for him. So why? Why would he do something so reckless that he knew would get him caught and punished so severely? I hope he believed doing right was too important. That the creation myth holds that he loved humans and was willing to sacrifice his freedom for a time so that we could flourish. Maybe he could just see the punishment would be bearable with an end in sight. It's not clear, but we are Heracles and it is time to set Prometheus free. Ah, perhaps there has been enough destruction for the time. When a bird successfully eats from this, we will break it. Until then, I'll make a quick modification for my weekly D&D game.